Baptism is symbolic of what Jesus did for us in his death, burial, and resurrection. Being lowered in the water represents our old life dying. Just like Jesus was dead and buried, who we were and what we've done is death. Our past and future sins are forgiven. When we are raised out of the water, we are reminded our new life is made possible because of Jesus' resurrection. We are a new creation. Today, we celebrate as people take their next step and tell the world how Jesus has brought them from death to life. We celebrate because they have a new life in Jesus. They have been made brand new. They are forgiven. They are a new creation. Today is hey! Baptism hey! Sunday 2019. The first one of the year. The first one of the year. We couldn't be more excited. This is like Christmas for us, all right? As pastors, this is like why you live and breathe and why we get up every morning is to see life change. And this like seals the deal, right? Go on top with your faith. It's one thing to raise your hand and say in the dark with eyes closed and to say, hey, I want Jesus in my heart. That's awesome. And we celebrate that every single week. But when you step on a platform in front of a crowd and you're willing to say, I'm going to be dunked underwater and I'm going to come up fresh and new because I want everybody to know I'm living for Jesus. Man, that takes boldness and courage. And we get pumped up about that. But before we go into that, and I'll probably like, I'm trying not to like walk right off the stage. You know what I'm saying? I get kind of, I think I might've been dancing around and unplugged the sound system back there a while ago. Cause it unplugged no, or, tell, tell or them the enemy actually did it. Tell them what you told me. You turned and what? I turned and our sound system was unplugged completely. Unplugged. Like, unplugged from the wall. Unplugged. So hold on. If you're not catching what she's saying, when we started, the reason we had sound was cause it was plugged in. <laughs> For all of you who are not, who are and technically challenged. When we didn't have sound, it's because it became unplugged. Yeah, we threw a breaker and What's it interesting about that is it's behind a little half wall and nobody touched it. That was weird. The enemy did not, not want us to be we're on here, get, right? Devil needs new That's dentures. right. It's he does. Hey, I'm telling you. This he, party he is, is going to hate started. what's about to happen. <laughs> I mean, he is going to hate this. All right, but before we move into today, let me just tell you. It's February. Does anybody know it's February? What happens in February? Listen to me. Does anybody know in February what happens? Now, some of you guys, oh, you, you know. Some <laughs> of you are thinking Valentine's Day, and I'm thinking. <laughs> it was a treat. Valentine's Day? No, we don't care about that, right? Whatever. That's overrated. That's no. Mushy. February yeah. is C3. C3. Woo! Dallas, here we come. So listen, on February 1st, one of our leaders, Miss Sierra, sends me this gif, right? You guys know what gifts are. If you don't, come on, come Misty, see me, and I'll yourself. show you they some, know what okay? Gifts are. Look at this. She sends me this, and she's like, woo, it's February. And I'm like, you are right. And no, you know what? That girl hasn't actually got to experience C3. C3. This is going to be her first Time. She said it's a, her text said it's the first day of C3 month. That's right. C3, C3 month. month. It's C3 a whole month, month long celebration. So I'm here to tell you, if you have not got registered, it is not too yeah. late. We have 70 some people going to Dallas with us. You need to jump on the bandwagon. You have to. We even actually have space still in the hotel we're staying in because we kind of, which is a miracle. Like, the Helton family spread out just in case we needed to start giving up rooms and bunk together. We can. All right. So we got a little extra space. But you can still get on there, get registered. It's 15 bucks plus your food and your hotel. It's well worth it. Listen to me. Use up those sick days, all right? Come on. I will write, I will write a letter for you. I wrote some letters for some bosses we and say, hey, come on. We have some guys from C3 Seriously, write letters. This, this should be considered like education, continue education, leadership, leadership development. development. Because right. you will come back a different person. It will make you better That's in right. your career, but it also makes you better in your calling. That's Whether right. you're volunteering or not, you're called to the kingdom of God to make That's a right. difference, to help people know That's who right. God is, to help make him known. You're going to come back so fired up about your relationship with God, right. and you're going to be like, I just can't wait to do something for God. Just, Lord, let me do something for you. You're going right. to come back so excited. you got to go. It's like youth camp for adults. Craig Rochelle. That's right. Right? Yep. Michael Todd. 
Who else are we going to have? We're going to have... Ed Young, David Ed Hughes. Ed Young Jr., David Hughes. Woo! Church by the Glades. Oh, awesome. my word. The list goes on and on. If you don't know who we're talking about, you need to come with us, and you will come back different, all right? If you don't know how to register, we have an app. It just go Mountain Movers Church and look up the app in the App Store or wherever you get your app. I dare you. I trip or dare you. Do go it. on our website, all right? We couldn't make it any easier for you other than if I we signed you up, paid for you, got your bags packed, and took you with me, all right? So come on. Step year. it up. Ooh, okay, all right. Well, enough of that. All right, so you're going to do it? You're going to do it? Yeah. All right, I hope you do. All right. Woo! Okay, so this morning we are going to celebrate life change with baptism, all right? So, so let, let's just paint a picture here for you. Um, before we get into what baptism is and why we should be baptized, I want to just first start by celebrating last year. You know, the Bible says that, that people, when they come to Christ, uh, that they're, they're only drawn by the power of the Holy Spirit. So here's what I want you to understand through that. It's not anything that Misty and I say or do. Um, we play a part, but so does our parking team. So does the First Impressions team. So does our Child uh, Connect and, 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 and all the way around. Everybody does their part, yes, but ultimately at the end of the day, people come to Christ because of the drawing of the power of God because he's drawing them to himself. And last year, by the Lord's power, he pulled in over 200 people in this minute through Mountain Rivers Church. They came to Christ because of the drawing and the power of the Holy Spirit. And we couldn't be more excited. And so as we're, as we're moving now into 2019, we can't wait to celebrate that life change with you guys. We can't wait to see those who have come to Christ to really seal the deal and get baptized. I wish we could play the Nacho Libre. Uh, you have not been baptized. I want to play that, but I keep forgetting every time we do a baptism. I'm going to have it next time. Next time we're going to play it on a loop or something. It's going to be really good. So listen, listen, I want, I want to tell you real Can quick, you it? Paul, Paul is this amazing guy that wrote like two thirds of the New Testament. Incredible, incredible guy. And what, I say this a lot, but this really truly is one of my favorite scriptures. I promise like top three right here, all right? If you want to know Pastor Brad's really, really, really favorites, this is among the top three. Romans 1.16, it says, this is Paul saying this, for I am not ashamed of the good news about Christ. It is the power of God at work, saving everyone who believes. Let me read that again. I'm not ashamed of the good news about Christ. It is the power of of God at work, saving everyone who believes. And Paul was one of those guys that, man, he was all out, die hard, 150% everything for God. I mean, he was all out for God because if you, would have, if you only knew his story and knew what God had done with him, you'd understand why he's so passionate about the cross and so passionate about the resurrection, so passionate about baptism. He was all out for God, 150%. He wasn't ashamed. And you know, um, in life, there's lots of times when, when we share things that we're not ashamed about. There's times when we share things that, that we're excited about, things that we want to celebrate. Paul was all about celebrating his relationship with God. He didn't have a problem telling anybody about it. But you know, in, in, in today's culture, you know, we've got social media and, and what, a, what a, a very tangible avenue to be able to see what's going on in people's lives. I love that I'm able to stay connected with people I went to grade school with. All right? Like back, back in the 90s. You know what I'm saying? Grade school in the 90s. Wow. Because <laughs> I'm so young. Um, or maybe it was early 2000s. How, how, yeah. But it's crazy how, I can, how we can stay connected with those that we went to school with. I mean, some people you haven't seen in, in 20 years. You know what I'm saying? It's crazy. But what I really love is I love seeing people celebrate what's going on in their lives. We might live 500 miles away, but I love seeing what they're celebrating in their lives. It's, it's so fun to celebrate with them and to see what's going on. And um, we do that a lot, don't we? Whatever we're excited about, whatever we're most excited about, we share it on social media. We get it out there because we want everybody to celebrate with us. And, and we go loud and proud about a lot of things, right? I, I want to show, show you a quick video uh, just of some examples of how people just go all out celebrating the things that they're excited about. Watch this. Last b-ball game right there. There's Linda riding with Flipper. <laughs> They're, in China. They're in China, right there. Oh. Cody and Erica's new house. Look at that. Ah, they got a newborn calf. 
Oh, new they're baby. celebrating new birth. New baby on the farm. Oh my gosh, somebody. <laughs> That's Chris in his Christmas suit. Fish on. Fish. There's Nikki and they're celebrating the gift that she was given. If you can't it's read this, they're talking about giving out 20 invites last week. So I'm right here. Oh, look, Miss Terry. Ethan Terry got married. Woo how many of you guys, honestly, and don't lie, right? You're in church and I have your Facebook feed. So how many of you do that? Like whatever's going on in your life. You know, Science Fair was like two weeks ago, right? Science Fair, all you could do, whether you liked it or not, you get on social media and you're like, oh, their kids won, their kid won, their kid won, their kid won. You know what I'm saying? But I was the loser mom, okay? My kids won. And I didn't even post pictures at all. And it was like, only in today's culture would you feel like an epic failure as a mom if you failed to go public with your kids' accomplishments. So, like, days later, I'm thinking, man, Mia brought home, like, three ribbons. Blake did. Ty, thank God's in high school, and he's like, no more science fair. Past, Woo! Thank We're, God he's We should celebrate fair. that because yeah. <laughs> we are not a science family. And I thought, epic failure. So I thought about posting, like, you know, mom fail and going ahead and putting them out, like, two weeks later. And then I felt like I'd make everybody feel bad because my kids wiped out everybody. No, just kidding. But you know what? We go public all the time. That's what today is all about. You know, when you think about baptism, I want you to think about this. What is the big deal? Whether it is a pond or a stock tank or the lake or the swimming pool or Merrimack River, we have baptized in just about every pond or any kind of water, anywhere, bathtubs, we have baptized. What is the big deal? Let me tell you what the big deal is. Did you know when Jesus started his ministry at the age of 30, do you know how he started? He went into the wilderness. Yes, he fasted, okay? He did that. He comes out. You know where he goes? He goes down to the Jordan River. He walks about 75 miles, okay? How many of you have walked 75 miles to get here today? Mm-mm. You didn't even drive 75. He walked 75 miles to get to wh from where he was to the Jordan River. Why? Because the Jordan River was where his cousin, John, better known as John the Baptist, was baptizing people. You see, God had sent John the Baptist as this forerunner, if you will. He went out first, and he started telling people there was going to be this Messiah coming. And when he comes, he's going to forgive you of all your sins. And so you need to come and be baptized into the way. And as he's out here preaching, and there's masses of crowds of people around the Jordan River, which Brad and I had the privilege of being baptized in the Jordan River right there ourselves in 2011, Jesus makes his way down through this crowd. Now, imagine John the Baptist is standing here, and he's thinking to himself, wow, here he comes. Like, that's my cousin. He's about to make his entrance because he hadn't been doing ministry yet. He comes down. He comes all the way into the water, and you think in your mind, I'm thinking, John's thinking, dude, you can have my platform. Like, you can take it on. You are the Messiah. I'm not even worthy to tie your shoes. Come on. You start baptizing. And instead, Jesus comes up to John, and he says, I want you to baptize me. And he's like, What? What are you talking about? You want me to baptize you? You are Jesus. You are the Messiah. Knock, knock, knock. Do you not know who you are? You know what I'm saying? You didn't practice that one. I know. I just, just comes to me. These things just come to me. And so he doesn't understand. And Jesus looks at him and he says, this is the right thing to do. This is what we have to do. Why? Because it was the start of his ministry. So John baptizes him, you know. He's like, in the name of the Father, yourself, and the Holy Spirit, I baptize you, you know. And down he goes, and up he comes, and, and the dove comes down and lands on his shoulder. And you hear Jesus say, man, this is my son, in whom I am well pleased. And you get this total picture of the Trinity, right, at this beautiful moment in the Jordan River. And then Jesus goes out, and he starts preaching. He starts doing this thing publicly, all right? This was like the staple, the beginning. Then you watch his life. For three years, he goes out. Man, he's a fireball. Everybody's following, and thousands of miracles are happening day in, day out, day in, day out. Three years, he gives his life. He's, he's crucified, buried, resurrected, and then he roams around for a few days, you know, and he's got this following about 500, and he's telling them, I'm leaving. Dude, I did what I come to do. Now I'm out of here. Like, I'm going back to sit next to my father on the throne. I'm gone. Right before he leaves, he goes to Matthew 28, 19, and he says this. Look right here. Therefore, now, therefore means you need to read everything prior to that, but due to the sake of time, I'm not going to do that for you. You go back and read it yourself, all right? I kind of told you what it did. Therefore, go and make disciples of all the nations, baptizing. Can you say baptizing? 
baptizing them into the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Guys, this is the last thing he said before he left. Now, what did he do at the beginning of his ministry? He gets baptized personally and goes public, right? At the end of his ministry, right before he ascends, he tells us to go get the people, win the people, and baptize the people so they can go public and do what? Get to work telling others about Jesus. Now, go ahead. Give God a hand. Come on. You can give God a hand. I can take a breath. You know what I'm saying? Thank you. It helps me a lot. If Jesus started and ended his ministry with baptism, how important do you think it is? It's very important. Now, is it salvation going under that water? I mean, do we have to have some certain type of water to make sure your sins are forgiven? No. I hope not. No. Because right that is right out of the hose, all right? And we got heaters in there. It's sweet, okay? Actually, our heaters, I it's think, hot. we're flipping our Water's breakers, hot. too. Listen to me. Baptism is not salvation, all right? When you ask Jesus to come into your heart in that very private moment and you say, Lord, forgive me of my sins. I believe on the cross. I believe that everything you did was for me, that my sins could be forgiven. At that moment, you're saved, all right? But at that moment, it happened privately in your heart. When you go under that water, what you're literally doing, listen to me, the word is baptizo. Can you throw it up there for him? Baptizo, this is the Greek definition of the word baptize, okay? It literally means to dip and to die. I want you to think about this. How many ever dipped Easter eggs? Come on, participate. Thank you. Thank you. That's so awesome. Okay. You want to get out of here on time or I'll just keep going? Okay. If you've ever dipped an Easter egg, you know you take this white egg and they're all the same, right? The old school way. You boil them up, you get your beautiful colors, and you dip them. However you want. They go into the dye and they come out looking different. That is the exact definition of the word baptize. You go into that water. Listen, we all have a past. Every single one of us. The ones who act like we're perfect because, well, I could go into our personalities, but it's okay. We know we're not deep down, okay? We all have a past. But when you go into that water, what you're saying is, you know what? In front of everybody, my past, I'm going to bury it. I don't care. I learned from it. I'm going to help others because of it. What I've walked through in my past, I'm going to be able to help other people come alongside of them because I once was addicted, but now I'm free. I once was bound, but now I'm free. When I go under that water, I'm going to leave all that junk in my past. But when I come up, I'm going to be resurrected with new life. I'm going to be died. I'm not going to look the same. I'm not going to feel the same. I'm not going to act the same. I'm going to go public, not only in the water, but when I come up, I'm going to go bold and tell people about Jesus. You know, the word says in 2 Corinthians that when we have died to Christ, we are now resurrected. Actually, uh, go to the next one. Romans 8, 6. There you go. I'm going all by memory. Here we go. For we are died and we're buried with Christ in baptism. And just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glorious power of the Father, now we also live new lives. Guys, whatever your past looks like, leave it under the water. Leave it down there. And for all of you who are saying, you know, I've already baptized. That's fabulous. You know what you should be doing? Boldly proclaiming the message of Jesus Christ boldly. That's what baptism is all about. It's like that gusto that gets inside of you and you're like, I'm going to tell somebody. I'm going to tell somebody. Why? Because people are dying and going to hell every single day. Every single day. People take their last breath and every single day they stand in front of eternity. And only because of these moments where someone has shared Jesus with them is their eternity turned from hell to heaven. Just last week, a friend of ours who is way in his 80s came to Brad bawling his eyes out. And he said, last night, I made a decision I should have made a long time ago. Last night, I made a decision to spend eternity in heaven. Last night, I gave my life to Christ. This is a guy we've known since we came here. Absolutely. You know what? Why do we get excited? Because we know what new life is all about. We know what it's like to live in bondage, but we know what it's like to live a brand new life. So today, there's going to be those that go public with their faith. And we couldn't be more proud. But I, I want to ask you, if you're in this room and you've not been baptized, I want to encourage you, all right? You think about what God has done in your life. Think about, think about how he's, he's saved you and he's healed you and he's set you free. He's given you hope that you, you never would have had without him. 
I want you to think about that, and I want you to realize that you have an opportunity today. And you're thinking, Pastor, I didn't come prepared to get baptized. That's all right. We've got towels right over here. We'll give you a shirt out in the foyer. You can go home wet and happy because you went public with your faith. I'm telling you, there's nothing, there's nothing like it. Acts 22 and 16 says, what are you waiting for? Why wait any longer? The water's warm. The towels are ready. We got a shirt for you. Listen, this is your time. This is your moment. You know, this year we're building a building, yeah. But you know what we're really building? We're building people. We're building people. And this isn't just our time as a church to build a building. This is our time for lives to be changed. For us as a church to not be ashamed like Paul. Not be ashamed of the gospel that's in us. Not be ashamed of what Christ has done within us. But to go public with our faith. To let the world know, you know what? I don't care what you think. I don't care what you have to say. I know what Jesus has done for me, and I am going to live it loud and proud, and I'm not going to make any apologies about it. We're living in a day and time, and we have too many people that are living shallow lives, and, 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 and they're afraid to stand up for really for what's right. I mean, listen, there's nothing better to live for than Jesus. There's nothing better to be excited about and to go public with than what Jesus has done in your heart and in your life and your mind. So I want to encourage you in these next few moments, we're going to give an invitation to you. If you haven't been baptized, I want you to be thinking right now, begin preparing yourself to get up out of your seat and to head to the foyer. And they're going to give you a shirt. You can get changed and come in and get baptized. Let us celebrate with you. All right. This is what life change is all about. And so before we do that, I want to encourage you with this. Before you ever get baptized, you need to realize that life is waiting for you. Life has a name. His name is Jesus. Hope has a name. His name is Jesus. And and you you can have all the money in the world. You can have the best job, live in the nicest house, and you can have everything that, that you could ever really want as a person and be completely empty on the inside. Because there, there's nothing that's going to bring you real satisfaction, real fulfillment, real hope in this life than having Jesus in your heart, in your life, to have a real and life-changing relationship with him that is contagious and to make heaven your home. And that's our prayer for you today. So if you would, let's bow our heads. And I'm going to give you an invitation to come to know Christ right now. With heads bowed and eyes closed, you might say, I'm one of those, Pastor, that you're talking about. I'm one of those. I, 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 need, I need to make my life right. I need to make my heart right with Christ. I need that real and life-changing relationship you're talking about. And today, in just a moment as we pray, we're going to ask God to forgive us of our sins. We're going to believe that Jesus is the Son of God. He is who He says He is. We're going to confess with our mouths together that Jesus Christ is Lord. Make a decision, a determination today that we're going to live for Him. No matter what it takes, no matter what it costs us, we're going to live for Christ. So having said that, with heads bowed, eyes closed, if you're in this room today, and you want to know Jesus as your Savior, as your friend, as your hope. I'm not going to call you forward. This is that private thing that we were talking about. This is different from baptism. This is a private dedication that you make between you and the Lord. But if that's you today, would you make that decision and just signify by raising your hand? If you're in this room and you want to know who Jesus is, you want to live your life for him fully, would you raise your hand in this place today? And we're going to pray with you right where you are. Thank you, Lord. Amen. I see your hand, buddy. Anybody else? See your hand. Anybody else today? I see your hand, honey. Anybody else today? Jesus, I see your hand. Thank you. Anybody else today? Sweet Jesus. Thank you, Father God. Thank you, Lord, for drawing these individuals, God, by your power. You love them so much. You died for them, God. You gave them hope. You gave them a future. You gave them heaven as their home, God. So, church, let's just pray this prayer together as, as we support those who are making this life-changing decision today. Let's pray this. Father, I love you. Thank you for Jesus. Forgive me of my sins. Cleanse my heart. I believe Jesus is the Son of God. He is the Messiah. I confess him as Lord of my life. I will live for you, God, never to be the same again. According to your word, in Jesus' name, everybody said.
Amen. 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 I want to tell you right now, if you just prayed that prayer, that is the best decision you will ever make in your life. And we have a gift for you. It's called your next step. It's going to be on the left when you exit in a green bag for growth. All right. It's got a brand new Bible. It has a message from Brad and I on what to do next. But I'll just tell you what it says. Okay. Just one little sneak peek. The very next thing after salvation is water baptism. That's what we're going to tell you to do. Why? Because it's about standing up and boldly going public with your faith. That's what it's all about. So today, there are those of you, you guys went on, you were those overachievers, and you registered. You told us, I'm going to be baptized, all right? Some of you, you're sitting here, and your heart's doing this. Yeah. Because right now, it's the Holy Spirit dealing with you, and you're thinking, like there's a rope that's I need, pulling you. You're like, I, I need to go. I need to, I need to do this, but I didn't register. And my hair is going to get wet, and I'm going to be drowning in front of everybody. You know what? It's okay. It's okay. It's okay. Here's your full, first bold step of faith. You That's stand right. up. If you're registered or not, and you want to be baptized, stand up right now. Go to the double doors at the Come back. On, Follow it. Miss do Charity it. out right now. Follow Miss Charity out. If you're registered, if you're not, you're going to be baptized. Come on. Celebrate those. They're going to make this decision. Amen. Come on. Go on Anybody back. Anybody else? Let's go. They're going to get you a brand new shirt that you're going to get to put on. All right, well, they're going to get you all ready. And while Thank that's happening, the rest of us, you're going to stand to your feet with us. We're jacked up, all right? We're going to hopefully not bounce off the stage. And we're going to celebrate because you know what? It's all about our belief. God can do anything. If he can take a wretch like me and turn my life around, you know what? It's worth celebrating. Come on, here you go. Come on, come on, come on. Come on, come on. Come on.
in just a moment, we're going to have those that have made that decision. And those public to their face, they're going to walk through these doors. And they're going to line up down this hall, and they're going to get ready to go in. And I, I, I want this, this to require formal and complete participation. All right? And if you guys are ready in the foyer, you can bring it in. Total and complete participation. Because you see, they're making a decision to go public. They're being bold. They're stepping out. In front of you. In front of those watching on Facebook Live this morning. Because we're recording in all three services so the world can watch. When they go down in the water, though they are to give our lives to Christ, this is a, this is a symbol of their sins being fully washed away. It's the same as when Christ went down into the tomb and he conquered death. He died for you and I that we have life. But three days later, three days later, he overcame all death in the grave. The stone was rolled away. Jesus, our King of Kings and Lord of Lords, we found out that he's alive. When we come up out of the water, that's the resurrection. That's the resurrection that we're celebrating. When they come up out of the water, they're coming out of the tomb. They're coming out of death. They're coming out of anxiety and hopelessness and despair and sin. That's when they come up out of the water, I want you to do something, all right? I want us all to do something. I know probably none of our teams made it to the Super Bowl. I'm going to say that by faith. <laughs> so I don't mind it. But tonight, a lot of living rooms are going to be full of people going absolutely ballistic. That's so. Over being dead for chips. I'm just telling you, they're going to go nuts. Take care of the ball. But here's what I want to do. I want to bring some encouragement to how the whole Super Bowl thing turned out. Okay? I want you, just for a moment, just for a moment, to pretend as if your team made it to the Super Bowl. And then I want to take it just a step further, okay? I want you to pretend we're at the end of the fourth quarter and the score was tied and there was five seconds left in the game. All right, let's make it over, double overtime. There's five seconds left in the game and your team catches the ball in the end zone I want to know, we're going to do this for five seconds. I want to know, and you be as honest as you can before the Lord God oh, Almighty. I want to hear the same yelling, screaming, shouting, celebrating that I would hear in your living room for five seconds. I want to hear the kind of yelling I would hear if that happened. Are you guys ready? Woo! Team, four team, on the count of three, just won the Super Bowl. You guys ready? Double overtime, five seconds. They just got ready. One, two, three, go. exactly what we're going to do when each one of these people come up out of the water. We're going to hoot and holler, and we're going to yell, and we're going to shout, and we're going to scream, because guess what? They're going to heaven! Oh! Oh!
So proud of these that have made this decision to go public. Wasn't that awesome? Woo! My goodness. Yeah. So what we're going to ask you guys to do is come on back, and we're going to pray over you. How many you of you guys right know that, that when you. you when you make a decision to follow Christ, that all of hell comes against you and, right. and, and tries to pull you down and, and keep you from what God has for you? And so it's absolutely a battle. Uh, but this battle that we're living, it's not a battle against flesh and blood, but it's against principalities and forces of darkness of the unseen world. And so we're going to pray over them, not only a hedge of protection, but pray that God would help them to be strong each and every day to live and walk out their faith. Amen. Amen. Father, we love you so much, God, and we thank you, God, for these that have made this decision. God, we ask in the powerful name of Jesus, Lord, that you would cover them, God, with your word. I pray, God, that you would infuse them with your power and with hope each and every day, God, as they get in your word. Uh, I pray that you would speak to their hearts, Father God, each and every day, God. Every week when they come to church, I pray in Jesus' name, Lord, that you would just that you would just help them, God, to get connected with people in the faith, God, and that you would help them, Father God, to, to grow in their faith. We're so grateful, God, for these that have made this decision, Father God. We just pray a hedge of protection over them. Pray that you bless them in the powerful name of Jesus. Everybody said? Amen. Woo! <laughs> Give them one more hand as they, as they exit the sanctuary today. Woo! I believe, I believe, yeah. I believe, I believe in you. I believe, I believe, I believe, I believe in you. Yeah. Hey, thanks for joining us today. We sincerely hope the message impacted your life. Stay connected with us by following us online or you can find us on Facebook. If you would like to partner with us financially, we have a few easy ways to give. You can text your giving to 77977 and simply type in MMC and follow the prompts. Or you could find us online at www.mountainmoverschurch.org and click the Give Now tab. Or you could simply mail your giving in to 24000 South 660 Road, Grove, Oklahoma, 74344. We are a church leading people into a real and life-changing relationship with Jesus Christ that is contagious. We look forward to seeing you next week.